Hi guys, and welcome back to another video or welcome if you are new here. My name is Dana. I am a mom to four, two of which I currently homeschool. I have a first grader this year as well as a kindergartner. As you can tell from the title down below, I'm actually going to be sharing with you my kindergartners, kind of what we're going to be doing for math this year slash kind of what we are doing already. I mentioned in a previous video that it was not my really goal or intention to do a formal kindergarten math curriculum this year because she's actually just finishing up her kindergarten curriculum. She did the CLE kindergarten one and two and I didn't think it was quite necessary to do a standalone kindergarten curriculum when it came to math this year because this is her last and final light unit for kindergarten two and as you can tell there's quite a bit of math in here and it's at that kindergarten level so everything in here would be the same type of thing that she would learn in that standalone kindergarten math curriculum however she is not quite at that first grade level so we're kind of in between grades right now where it's not necessarily a necessity to do that kindergarten math if you know what I mean um, because it was very very well done in here in my video that I did when I was sharing with you our kindergarten curriculum choices I actually had a mama comment on there that the good and the beautiful was actually offering all of their math and their language arts for free to download so just in case my little one did want the actual book work when it comes to math because she actually really likes doing book work I did go ahead and print off the kindergarten math in the good and the beautiful this one right here and it actually is a very very gentle approach and it is at grade level and so if she is wanting something more math related and because it is really cutesy and a lot of like other things too besides the math I might see if she is interested in doing that I'll do a complete flip through probably in my next video if you are wanting to see kind of what it looks like and if you are interested in printing off one for yourself you can do that and actually know what it looks like <laughs> So for all the actual hands-on activities and resources that I have for math right now is specifically that kindergarten grade level and honestly it's first grade level too but kind of that limbo in between. Um, typically each day I set like a small theme for the day whether it be learning about money, learning about how to tell time, just all those things that you would typically find in that kindergarten level math book. So some of the resources I have for that first theme of telling time is I love these painless learning placements. I don't know if you can tell here fits in the frame but I love these they are a wet erase and dry erase and I love it because as you can tell they have the clocks but what I really like about these is on the back they actually have some practice of where you can actually fill in the clock for yourself all the different time zones and things like that and it also talks about kind of like schedules and things like that um, but I really really like this because as I mentioned before they are dry erase and wet erase which means they're also cleanable so I set this out on our dining room table and we'll kind of wrote these, rotate those out on our table I do have a couple dozen different ones when it comes to the placemats. The other thing that I have to go along with the actual placemat here is I actually have a couple of those little learning resources yellow clocks. I'll insert a picture here of what I'm talking about because I forgot to grab it when I came outside today. <laughs> but I have about a pack of four of those and typically what I do is I set my clock at a certain time and then the kiddos will make their clock match mine and kind of tell me what time it is doing it that way. So using those clocks in coordination with a map like this or a chart like this really really helps actually get the point across as to for what times is what times. For learning about money again I have another placemat only it's all about money all the different coins and the bills and everything like that and again the same type of concept where on the back it's black and white where you can fill in. One of the things that I love about learning how to count money is it really is that addition, subtraction, whatever you want to call it. I don't think there's any greater way to actually learn addition and more hands-on than actually counting out money. And so I'm going to try to show this to you with one hand because my other hand is still very tied up, which is good. Anyway, um, the other thing that I love using for money and I highly recommend every home have one because like I said, there's no greater way to learn that addition and subtraction than using one of these. But that is one of these little cash registers. This one is from Learning Resources. And this is actually the exactly same one that I had when I was little. But it's just so much fun because typically what the kiddos and I will do is the kiddos will set up some type of like a store and then I'll give them each say $25 and some change and a little coin purse and then they'll go shopping at each other's stores and then I'll kind of help them and guide them when it comes to like counting money back, adding it up. And, but what is even more fun is we have those little brightly colored dot stickers like those yard sale stickers and then we'll put like the 25 cents on some stuff and some 50 cents items on stuff and some dollar cents. So they're actually hands on learning how to add these things up, add money up in their head 
and it kind of yeah I don't know it's just a ton of fun and then plus honestly they don't, they don't even think of it as math because they're playing stores so it's a ton of fun but to go along with the money of course I have like the fake dollar bills and a little pretend change and things like that but just some fun again hands-on way to learn addition and subtraction <laughs> another painless learning placement I have is a fraction one now this one is definitely beyond that kindergarten level but there are some like beginning beginning fractions on here as you can tell but I got this one specifically for my first grader because his curriculum is starting to introduce him to more fractions so I have this one and then the other painless learning placement that I have specifically for my kindergartners math is the painless addition this one I have the multiplication and subtraction as well but the addition one is amazing for that kindergarten level and then again on the other side it has that dry erase and wet erase option to where she can go through and fill this out every single addition fact that you need to know is on here and again I love the fact that she can do it over and over again with just wiping it off and redoing it so it's great I feel like I'm not wasting any type of worksheets and throw it just tossing it away when they're done when I have resources like this. So I love, love the placemats for sure. Another really great resource that I love using in our home, and I use this for those day-to-day -day conversations where I may not just be sitting at the table with them, but I'll be standing in the kitchen cooking and things like that with, and then they'll have their place value chart. And I'll tell my kindergartner, okay, can you use the flip value chart to explain number 26? So she'll be like, well, in 26, there are two groups of 10. So she'll flip it over to the two when it, on the tens column, like so. So you have the two groups of 10. And then I'll be like, okay, well, for 26, how many groups of one? So she'll flip it over to the six. And then she's not only visually seeing the representation of the place value, but also having to verbally explain it and then actually feel, feel it flip over for explaining it. So two groups of 10, six groups of one make the 26. So I love the place value and you can obviously go all the way up to the millions and everything like that. So it's really, really great. And then on the back, it also has where your one it starts in the middle. So you have more of the number line thing too. So I love using the place value for just that more hands-on um, look into, yeah, place value. <laughs> So I actually shared this book in my recent book outlet haul with you and I love this and this is one of those books as well as I'll show this one too while I have it as well as this one that is great for kindergarten and honestly preschool for learning how to count in general because you are having to count you know sometimes up to 20 up to 30 or even higher when it comes to search and find but when my little ones do search and find books they don't feel like they're counting or doing math they do it strictly for fun but one of the reasons why I love this one in particular is as you can tell there's a blank space here where the actual observer or the actual child that's counting on the pages here has to figure out how many is in each category. It's not the other way around. Typically, search and find books, they okay, we'll find 10 penguins, so you try to find the 10 penguins. Whereas in this one is see how many penguins you can find all together, and there's a ton of them, as you can tell. And then you write down in the blank space over here how many you found. So I love that because there's a ton of them on the page, so your numbers are going to be really high. Whereas in a typical search and find book like this one here, probably will only go up to number 12 but this one it goes very very high there's some bugs in here that you can go up to like 30 40 different bugs so how do you recommend this especially if you are having that kindergarten first grader who are past the number 20 when it comes to counting um, but they do it in a fun way where it doesn't feel like school so I love this a few other games and that again my kids don't view as actual math but they're just fine it just happens to be that and math is a part of it and that is the very classic uno game we love this game obviously the box has been torn and it's just like the game in the bag right now but it's great because as long as your little ones can count up to number 10 and they know all their colors they will love uno so highly recommend grabbing that and we actually play it in the morning before school even starts to kind of warm up their brains a little bit and make sure they're awake and it's just really fun and it's a fun it's also a gentle competitive game if that makes sense so we love that and then a few other little fun things is we like the Melissa and Doug math gears these ones right here and she, my little girl uses these ones specifically for just actually writing out math facts so instead of using her actual kindergarten curriculum workbook she'll open one of these up roll the little gears over to what she wants it to look like and then under here sorry I'm trying to do this one with, <laughs> with one hand and then here there's like a little flap here that tells you the answer what it is so she likes doing this I have the addition one for her and then I also have the subtraction multiplication and division ones as well here's the multiplication one um, but they're not quite at this level yet but I do have all four of the math gears so when they are ready we we have them on hand 
Another game that I was gonna mention when it comes to learning about money, again, I feel like just with the play money and the cash register, that's really the best hands-on way to do it. But if your kiddos do like games and they're maybe not into playing store or they're past that level or age, I should say, um, Exact Change is a really, really fun game. And again, it's also using like the concept of counting out money, only it's with a deck of cards, like in card form. So this one is a ton of fun. It is ages five and up, but my kindergartner has no problem playing with it. It's by Continuum Learning. And it's the game of making and counting change. And it is also kind of slightly competitive as well. But highly recommend this, especially if your little ones um, need some help learning how to count money. So an activity that I got my kindergartner for her birthday because it was very princess themed is this one right here. It's the math link cubes. Um, this is the fantastical set. It's very, as you can tell, princess themed. It has to do with all like the princess castles and everything. But these are honestly just the math linking cubes and you can get these anywhere. Um, but here's what they look like. But the one thing I like about these ones in particular is as you can tell, each different side has a different shape on them. So they're learning different shapes, colors, and things like that. So it's not just your math linking cubes. I love that they have the shapes on them as well. Like um, they have the octagons, hexagons, pentagons, triangles, squares, circles, ovals, hearts, stars, like all the shapes on here. So it's really, really fun. But the one thing I like about this set in particular is that it's an actual activity set. So it comes with all of these like little math flashcards, not flashcards, activity cards, sorry. <laughs> um, but this one is basic edition. So it's that kindergarten level type edition. And then for this one, it's who's the tallest. So look at the numbers on the items and build the cube towers kind of with the numbers on here. So it's just a lot of fun, different activities. They're introducing patterns, which is also great for kindergarten. They're introducing them to the concept of more or less. So which column is more, which column is less and things like that. So just a fun, fun concept. And there's of course all kinds of activity cards are double-sided. So uh, just a ton of activities to choose from and they are dry erase as well. So if they do want to use a dry erase marker and kind of fill in the patterns they can. But just a really, really fun concept. Um, this one's a more, more advanced pattern type activity and everything like that. And it even introduces them to estimation. So how many cubes do you think you can fit in each one of the castles? So it introduces that one. And then it also has like a critical thinking section. So definitely challenging. And I like things like this because it's not above that kindergarten grade level, but it's also challenging to the point where it actually challenges their skills. It actually creates that critical thinking in them. And I love things like that. That's why I'm kind of like in between the curriculum stages right now because she's past the kindergarten level math concepts, but she's not quite at the first grade. So it's kind of trying to figure out what to do where we're going to probably end up starting that first grade level math. So that's why I was thinking of starting the actual Good and the Beautiful Kindergarten math because even though she's kind of past the concepts, at least there'll be more strict math concepts if that makes sense. So there'll be actual addition before she hits that first grade level. Last couple of things I wanted to mention is we actually love using these Brain Quest cards and this is just like the math one. This is actually the grade one math um, deck. There's two different ones, but there's just a ton, a ton of different questions on these. So for example, this top one here says, say the numbers that come between four and nine. So they think about the numbers that come between four and nine, everything like that. So there's just a ton of the diff different questions all having to do with math and everything. And this pack I believe came with two. I will try to have everything linked down below if you are interested in seeing more about these. But they are a ton of fun. And BrainQuest has all kinds of different grades with all kinds of different categories. So they have the math, they have reading, they have a president's one, they have an America one, kind of like a fun for the car one. And just, yeah, just really, really fun things. And I like that they're already, they're bound, so they're not gonna come apart. But just a really fun twist on flashcards. So I love those. Speaking of flashcards, I mentioned that this thing here was actually my favorite find for the 22-23 school year. It's full of flashcards and things like that are wonderful. It is absolutely great for those little years. And I actually am a huge fan of flashcards because we use them not just when we sit down and do school, We'll use them it's kind of sporadically throughout the day. Sometimes we'll even leave them out on the dining room table or in our actual like daily school drawer. And we'll pull them out whenever we say we have a minute before dinner and we're waiting on everyone to sit down. We'll be like, hey, what's this? And we'll just make it into like a fun game versus an actual, okay, this is part of school. So we actually never use flashcards as part of our actual school. <laughs> it's more for during the day and it makes it fun and not seem so schoolish, if that makes sense. 
So the last thing I wanted to actually mention is this here. This is actually the All Ready for First Grade. It's like a little activity book. And this is actually really fun because it also has like little measuring activities. So they'll get their ruler out and kind of measure fun, some fun stuff that way. But highly recommend that too if you are in between grades like my little one is and you're wanting something just really fun. Um, the Ready for First Grade Readiness Kit, I believe it's, yeah, Learning Resources is really, really fun. Highly recommend getting that. Well guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I actually did not even realize until I went to edit this video a couple days later that there was no outro and it randomly ended because my camera battery died. So I apologize for that. But one of these days I will get better at actually paying attention to my camera and SD card life and battery life. Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy watching today's video and you got some good ideas for if you are wanting some more hands-on activities for your kindergartner or first grader. I always enjoy making these types of videos because it makes me kind of pull everything out of my activity cabinet and really think about what do we do use on that weekly basis in our home when it comes to math and stuff. So that was really, really fun. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy it as I said. And until my next video, you guys have a great one and God bless. Bye. We are sound asleep.